How can we compare the two healings of two women by Jesus? That's what we're going to talk about today in Mark 5. Had some doubts. We've had some people questioning it, but the apostles just got called. We're given their mission, and Jesus continues to challenge the Pharisees, challenge the rules, talk about the new wineskin. And so here we are. And now we have new stories of his ministry. So now they get in the boat to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Great storm arose, and then the boat was filling with water, and he was sleeping. And they said to him, why are you letting us drown? And again, man of action gets up, peace, be still. Water and the wind calms down, tells him, don't be afraid. Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have any faith? And they were filled with great fear and said, who is that can stop the wind? The Romans would have loved the wind story because he has action now over nature itself. Jesus heals a man who had demons, and this is going to be the story of the pigs. It said that he went to the countryside of Gerasene, which is the same place we saw before. It was named a different part, but again, it's a region in that area that had this place. Steps out of the boat. There was a man who was unclean. He was possessed by demons. He was living in the tombs. Here's a little bit different part of the story. He had been bound with shackles and chains. That's how dangerous he was. And it said that he had wrenched the chain apart and no one could subdue him, you know, take him down again. And he was crying and cutting himself with stones. I mean, this guy was far gone. Again, Jesus comes out there. The demon-possessed man through the demon says, what have you to do with me, son of the most high God? So he's calling him out for God. Again, the demons recognize Jesus. Do not torment me. And then Jesus says, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Jesus asks him what his name is. He says his name is Legion because we are many. And remember, a legion of troops in Rome was 6,000. This guy had a lot of demons going on in him. And so again, it begged him not to send him out of the country, probably back to hell. Then the demons entered the pigs. We don't know why. Maybe because demons can only destroy. They have no other ability than to destroy. Maybe they wanted to put a bad image on Jesus for killing the pigs. And then all the pigs filled with demons ran into the lake at number 2,000 and they drowned in the sea. So is that like three demons per pig? I don't know if the math works out like that. So then the herdsmen said, hey, told everyone what happened. They came out to see. And so first they saw the demon-possessed man who was back. He was back to where he was. And those who saw this told everyone about the pigs and then said, Jesus, uh, you know, could you go and stuff like that? Those pigs were like our dinner. We like those pigs. We wanted them there. But he was getting in the boat. A demon-possessed man wanted to come. And he says, you know what? Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's shown mercy on you. Again, mercy is not getting what you deserve. Mercy is getting what God gives you in being treated in a way that's better than what you deserved. They left, and the man went back to the capitalist. This is going to be like um, Greek cities. It's 10 cities in this region. And this man then told everyone, and they marveled, it said. More mysterious seeds being thrown out there. Begin hearing the word of God and begin hearing about Jesus everywhere. Jesus, again, is coming to save everybody, even the people who are not Jewish, raising pigs, in the Decapolis. We get back on the boat, we go to the other side, and one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jairus, seeing him, fell at his feet and implored, my daughter is at the point of death, come and lay your hands on her so she'll live. And so Jesus is coming along and is going to do that. And I pointed out in Matthew that when you're Jesus and you know everything that's going to happen, your daily planner looks like, okay, first Jairus is going to come to me, then the woman's going to come. So you know all of this is about to happen. You understand the path that is about to happen. So Jesus knows the entire story. So of course, the crowd is following along. They always follow him everywhere he goes. And so they're, everyone is about him. And there's a woman. And I think the, the TV show, The Chosen, does a good job of it. But there's so many crowds. And this woman had suffered from 
a discharge of blood for 12 years and su- it said it suffered much and physicians couldn't heal her. They couldn't do anything and it got much worse. And I'm not going to go into detail. I know people who have had similar things and it is horrible because not only when you have an illness like that, you don't feel well, but you can't go out in public. You can't do the things other people are doing because you can't control what is happening. This is just... I'm not going to say it's a lot like being a leper, but the idea is that you are as much an outcast as a leper is. You can't do any of the things. And so she was desperate. She goes out and she touches his garment. Maybe if I just even grab his cloak, I could be healed, right? And immediately she was healed. Jesus perceived that some power had gone out of him, that someone was healed from it. And he asked, who touched my garments? And the crowd is around him. And so he asks again, who touched me? He looks around and he sees the woman and she was afraid. She fell down and told him the whole story. And he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I want to make the point that it wasn't the cloak that healed Jesus. Cloaks don't heal people. It is that she reached out. She was desperate. She did. It just kind of reminds me of the guy who was lowered by his friends through the roof. People desperate to get the healing that Jesus can offer. And if, you know, she's trying to get through this very thick crowd of people, she was healed. And again, an unclean woman touching the robes of Jesus, this would have been horrifying to the temple leadership. You can't just touch a person like that, particularly a woman. This is such an act of compassion. So then, while he's still speaking, and they're moving their way over there, someone comes out and says, oh, sorry, your daughter's already dead. Leave Jesus alone. It's too late. It's over with. And Jesus says, don't fear. Only believe. When you're Jesus, there's no such thing as being late for your schedule. So he just goes in, and Peter and James and John come in with him and saw, you know, people wailing and gnashing of teeth and stuff like that. And he says, you know, all you people who are making commotion, child's not dead, just sleeping. And then they laughed at him because they knew this child was dead. I mean, obviously, people in that era knew a dead person. They understand life and death probably better than we do. So he takes her hand and he says, little girl, I say to you, arise. And I believe that's Aramaic. So he says it to her in Aramaic. He calls her little girl. And immediately she gets up. And she was 12 years old, and they were amazed. And again, he says, don't tell anyone about this. Someone thought was interesting about that story compared to the woman who was sick. She had been sick for 12 years. And Jairus, you know, they're all walking towards Jairus' house. Jairus' daughter was 12 years. So you must realize that while your daughter, who was 12, is sick, This woman has been suffering for that many years. Understanding and having compassion for everybody, young and old, sick and dead, is really important. So my meditation for this week is thinking about the parable of seed growing. Again, I went through that process and I try to think what happened. I try to think how it changed and I can't begin to tell you. But I think I want to spend some time reflecting on that part of my life. And I think, you know, too, you can think about how faith happens and how it's such a mystery to us and it doesn't come in the way we expect and it doesn't happen when we expect it. You know, we see certain people who we thought would never become a Christian become one. How does that happen and how does that seed grow? My prayer this week is for the people who don't know Jesus and to pray for them that they may have that experience of little leaf, the ear, and the ripened grain. I hope people get to that point when it can germinate inside them and they can have that harvest of their souls. And what I want to share with people is that, that God is behind every seed that is thrown out there. You don't have to be afraid that you're not going to say the right words. You're not going to do the right things. You're not going to put the right soil in the tray and plant your seed. That's God. God is doing the whole part of it. It takes pressure out of all of us who are trying to share our faith. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. 
please remember that I have a brand new podcast called Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak. It's it's not a religious podcast, but it's about nature and understanding it better and seeing frogs and trees and clouds. I hope you enjoy it. It's one of the great joys I have in my life is seeing this amazing creation God has created around us and appreciating it. So Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak, you can find it in your podcaster of choice. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening.